Ladies and gentlemen, you know when an episode of TV or a movie just sticks with you all day because it's that good? Yeah, that was House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 4. I wholeheartedly think it was one of the best episodes of House of the Dragon, if not the best one. There was so much to love about this episode, where it, whether it was, you know, the haunting of Hall, where it opened us up at, whether it was the battle and what happened through Throughout the battle, whether it was seeing Sir Kristen Cole be a complete fucking moron the entire time and just wishing he died on that battlefield, whether it was what we got about Rhaenyra telling her son about the Song of Ice and Fire and, you know, all of the old Aegon the Conqueror stuff, doesn't matter. There was absolutely so much to love about this episode. And from what I hear, there's a lot of lore and a lot of great Easter eggs from the books and things like that. Of course, I didn't read the books, but I could tell you I liked it one way, shape, or form or another. The episode is really cool in the beginning because it opens up with seeing more of the haunting of Harren Hall and all of that stuff. And I've been seeing killer, killer memes about that on Twitter. <laughs> Some of the stuff people put out are seriously so funny. I do not know where they come up with this stuff because it's just comedic gold. That's literally my favorite thing about these episodes of the show is going on Twitter. Also, before I get into the episode, I watched it a day late, and because I watched it a day late, I could not go on Twitter, because I was spoiled instantaneously. I clicked on the app icon. The very first thing that I saw was literally all different types of videos of Rainey's death. That's, that's literally all I saw was constant pictures of her going like this and falling in the sky, which I might say, I, I found that to be a little cheesy. Like, they, 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 I, don't, I don't know why it just looked cheesy. It reminded me of when Travis died in Fear the Walking Dead. But I will say, I, I, I mean, I don't mean that necessarily in a bad way against Rainey's and her actress, because Rainey's was a phenomenal character like she truly was epic in the show and it really sucks to see her go but i'm glad they did show it and i thought it was a really great one battle sequence because we got to see what you know Aegon was like <laughs> and the memes for that are also absolutely hilarious like i even put something up on this page about like mondays be like and it's a picture of that and that got no likes because i literally have no friends but that being said I really like that we got that adaption, and again, I, though I didn't read the books or anything like that, I'm liking the lore that apparently we're getting from the books brought to screen in a what seems to be relatively faithful way from everything I've been seeing about it. I really do like that, but I bounced around a little bit to go back to it. The haunting of Harren Hall stuff. I loved that we're. I love that we're getting more of Damon's side of this and more of his dreams because of the forest. I forget what kind of forest it's called, but essentially that Harren Hall is kind of was built on what um, I'd imagine to be like a haunted burial ground would be built on, you know what I mean? It's built with wood from a from the forest that apparently has something to do with the people. I, I don't I don't know. I, God, guys, I, I see you guys commenting that I need to know this stuff better. I get it. But th this this we're talking about a George R R Martin story. You know what I mean? There are so many moving parts to this story. I don't know all the little names. I don't. I'm a casual viewer who makes YouTube videos. You know what I mean? That being said, I love that we got to see more of his stuff there. I love that we got to see Damon's stuff. And I love that we also got a return to seeing young Rhaenyra once again, this time in a shot that mirrored a couple different things. Damon's assassination of the one guy who called Rhaenyra, you know, or someone a bastard or whatever it was in the first season, how he chopped his head off, like right at the tongue and said he should keep his tongue, that whole thing. And I also liked the fact that it was kind of a callback because of where Rhaenyra was sitting or standing to Daenerys' death in Game of Thrones Season 8. I like that it you had that reminiscent sort of atmosphere there with it. And I thought those dream sequences were really cool. 
Like everything that Rhaenyra was saying about how this is what Damon wanted and how he wanted to essentially like kill Rhaenyra and all of that stuff in a sense, that's kind of what it is. I know there's more there, but regardless, I liked that. I liked the sequence. I thought that was really fun and a great way to pick up the momentum of the episode because I don't think a minute of that was boring or anything like that. Even when we got Walmart Amond later in the episode where it's literally just Matt Smith with an eye patch on, I thought that was great. I liked seeing that, and I liked the background we got a little bit of that and how it kind of transitioned from Damon talking to the woman and she was kind of just like messing with him and all of that stuff to then him sitting with the Tarleys and, you know, that whole thing. I thought that was really cool. I really did. Are they the Tarleys or the Tyrells? Go ahead, roast me again in the comments. I don't know. There's so many, there's so many names. God, so many names. Whatever. Regardless, all of that stuff was cool and then the momentum just kept going whether it was the scenes with Allison and all of you know all the people there or whether it was just seeing Aegon and Aemon fight because essentially Aemon just walked into the small council meeting took over the meeting and essentially just left Aegon in the dust like what the hell am I gonna do I loved that and I loved that we got a little bit of them talking in Valyrian I think it is is that right I don't know there's so many I liked it I liked it, guys. I thought it was great. That was fun. That was cool. It was exciting to see all of that. But I re the, the overall point of me bringing it up is I like that we're getting to see Aegon's response to him not being taken seriously because... I mean, no one should take him seriously. He didn't even want to be king. You got to remember that. He didn't want this. And now he's just in it. He likes the power. I think, honestly, if you're looking at how it started, he really liked when he raised the sword and everyone cheered. I think that's just what gets him hype. I don't think it has anything to do with actual policy, obviously, very clearly. So seeing him kind of react to people not take him seriously after he's starting to get serious about the job is phenomenal. I really absolutely love it, and I love where it brought the episode later, because we got a lot there, of course, with Aegon and Aemon fighting Rhaenys later in the episode. I, I truly do love that, and I thought it was really great to see. I even liked Allison and Aegon's talk later in the episode, where you could tell she was finally talking back to Aegon, because no one was listening to Aegon, so now Aegon's finally going to listen to his mom, and when he does, she's just a complete bitch in the best way possible. If we're being realistic, that's how it was, and now it's because she's questioning everything based off of everything that Rhaenyra told her in the last episode, essentially how the entire story of Aegon being king was really Viserys telling Allison in his death bed and his death wish the story of Aegon the Conqueror and the Song of Ice and Fire like it's honestly I may not have understood that when I finished the episode of the last week and looking back on the video I was like damn I don't think I got that at all like I did but I didn't but now understanding it and seeing the consequences of that and where it goes this is absolutely insane and it's insane to see that Allison isn't backing down really at all because she knows that like no one's really going to listen to her. Things are already in motion. You can't really remove what's moving at this point. And even if they did, it's going to be so hard to do. It's not like they're just going to give everything back to Rhaenyra. That's not happening. So it's really interesting to see how that develops. Also really interesting to see how much I absolutely fucking hate Sir Kristen Cole. In the best way. I don't mean that as like a bad thing. I think he's a incredibly well-written character who you're meant to hate but this episode is a prime example of why i just wish he died on that battlefield you know what i mean but i know there's a lot more story there with him just like how i know like there's a lot of things here that i feel like are foreshadowing things to come especially the stuff at you know the haunting of a harren hall you know what i mean like how it's blatantly hinting at you know, Damon's death. Like, that's definitely where that's going to go. I don't know if it's going to happen this season. Apparently, there's a lot more story with Damon from what I've heard from people who like the books and blah, blah, blah. Apparently, there's a lot more to go, but I like that it's like slowly teasing and hinting things, like how they're talking about him dying in Harren Hall and things like that. But I, I like the overarching point is I like that they're bringing stories in a way where you could see where they're going to pan out. And that's what I really like about this story compared to something like Game of Thrones. 
I feel like this is a lot more grounded because you have a lot less people to focus on. I mean, really, we're following, I'm sure, a similar number of people, but it feels a lot smaller because it's really just two families fighting, you know what I mean? Like one big family feud, essentially, so it feels a lot smaller even though they keep introducing new characters and all that stuff. But really, there is so much there to love, and we didn't even get to the juicy stuff yet. Like, we didn't get to the ending of the episode really at all, which I thought was truly phenomenal, and it was the first time, I think, in House of the Dragon that we kind of got, like, a full battle. I mean, we missed a little bit of the hand-to-hand -hand stuff, but just seeing the dragons in a show called House of the Dragon come together and actually fight one another, truly great to see, finally, and I'm glad they're kind of, you know, amping that up from what I think they all said in the beginning of the season is that they are going to be ramping up the fights a little bit more, which look game of Thrones and I guess technically house of the dragon. I'm kind of looping them into one. They're at their best when they're not fighting. They're at their best when it's politics like happened in this episode. And that's why I think this episode is probably my favorite. If not one of my favorites of the show so far, it's because it had those two amazing elements. I care more about the politics, and I think they nailed the politics side of this episode. And I also like the battle stuff a little bit, because it's fun. It, it, you know, it keeps the pace going a little bit. So I think both are great to have. And it just kind of converged in such a great way in this episode with both of them being in one. It really did, and I loved every minute of it. I thought it was just truly phenomenal. As I mentioned, there were so many amazing elements to this episode, but the biggest one to me was, of course, that battle. Absolutely insane, and I have to say, off the bat, Rainey's was fantastic, and it really sucks to see her go as a character. I really liked her. I really liked her actress. I think she is going to be greatly missed throughout the show. Not that she was like this pivotal character who needed to be there or anything like that, but I really like what she brought to the table. I liked her, you know, kind of as a, a guiding hand throughout Rhaenyra's group and all of that stuff. And to see her go really sucks because she was great. And also the actress was great and all of that stuff, but it was absolutely necessary in terms of the story and I loved what we got. I loved everything about this. There was so much about that fight sequence that was so cool. Whether it was Sir Kristen Cole making the dumbass decision to march toward during daylight to leave themselves ripe wide the fuck open for an attack. Whether it was him then being like, oh, I have a better plan and Aemond comes out with the big one, Rhaegar, I think it is. Which one's the big dragon? Let me know in the comments. You guys are going to roast me for not knowing this shit anyway let me know down there i don't know the big one comes out and you know that's his whole backup plan because he sees rainy's coming in with melees and all that stuff so that was wild and then on top of that seeing aegon come in with his dragon whose name i also don't remember him come in and be like oh i'm gonna fight them too just <laughs> it's just to be the most pathetic thing ever it was so great, and it leaves a lot open that I think is very healthy to see. Whether it was the fact that we don't necessarily know if Aegon is alive or dead, because they didn't necessarily show it outside of Sir Kristen Kroll falling to the ground and all that stuff. I like that it left that open. I like that there's a lot more to tell, and I think going into episode 5, things are going to get absolutely insane. If this was the end to Aegon, which I kind of don't think it was, because they didn't really show... A body, I mean, I could be wrong, but if that truly is the end, this story is about to get absolutely insane. And even if it's not the end, this story is about to get absolutely insane because of Kristen Cole's dumbass decision. Also, bringing back the head of Melee's, as it looks like, in the episode. So that's going to be nuts to see. Rhaenyra's response to losing Rainey's is. I, I can't wait to see that, as well as, you know, like all the people that they're with. I'm so excited to see where this goes but all in all this episode was just phenomenal on really i think every front i loved every single bit of it and i am so hype for episode five i'd love to know what you guys have to say about this episode down there in the comments i'm sure you're gonna roast me down there for not knowing all these names but look i'm trying here okay I, i'm trying all right i'm researching a little more you know what i mean Jeez. okay Regardless, until the next one, I'll talk to you later. Peace out.